Once you set up a 3D space and populate it with a bunch of objects, you typically want to animate that space in some way. You might want to animate the objects in the space, and that's one whole thing. The other thing is you might want to maneuver your way through it. And using a null object layer is a pretty good way to do that, but there are some limitations. You overcome those limitations using a virtual camera. You can add any number of cameras to a 3D space here inside After Effects. So I'm going to introduce you to cameras in this lesson, and I'll talk more about how they work and how to maneuver them in upcoming lessons. So go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and go on down to 1801 Camera Setup. So we've got this scene here with three boys in it, off into the distance. This boy is at zero in terms of the Z-space pixels. This one's back 3,000 pixels. This one's back like 8,000 pixels. So they're pretty well spread out there. I've got this text in the same plane as the boy. Now, if we were to maneuver our way through this space, we would use a null object layer as one way to do that. So I've got this null object layer there, and I've got everybody parented to it. So if I just take that null object layer by just turning on so I can see it, for example, and clicking on it, there it is. I want to slide it to the right. There we go. And if I slide it to the left, that works like that. If I want to lift it up or down. There we go. And if I want it to go back or forth in Z space, Go back and forward like this. And there you go. You can maneuver your way through Z space pretty well using a null object layer. The downside is that the null object layer really is moving everything. And it's moving it from wherever the null object layer is located. And here the null object layer is located in the same plane as the boy and the text. So if I want to, let's say, tilt this, if I were looking at it with a camera, and your viewers are thinking in terms of a camera here, that's kind of how folks think. They're thinking they're watching this from a camera's point of view. If I were to tilt this now from the position here over the null object layer is, it won't look realistic. It won't look like a camera is tilting there because it's going to tilt at the position where the boy is and the text is. So I'll show you how that works. I'll go down here and click on R for rotation. I'll tilt with the X axis because that's the way you would tilt up and down. So I start tilting and it's tilting on top of the boy essentially and on top of the text. So the camera is somehow physically right there where the boy is, even though we're looking at it from a distance. It's not a realistic kind of tilt. So this is where problems arise when you use a null object layer. At least this is one of the things that happens when you use a null object layer that just sort of breaks that sense of reality. So I'm going to reset that now and go back to its starting position. Instead, what you can use is to use a camera. So we've already got a camera here. Let me just turn it on for you. Not much changed because I set the camera up to look basically like the default view. It emulates a 50 millimeter lens and looks all the world like this, but you can't manipulate that invisible camera. But now that I've applied a camera, this camera that I've applied will now override that and we can manipulate things with that camera. So let me show you that camera settings by double clicking on the camera layer here. There you go, that's what a camera settings looks like. You can choose between a one node or a two node camera. The one node camera basically says wherever you are moving this camera, that's what you see. A two node camera has this thing where you get a point of interest, where you can maneuver the camera in one thing, but you can turn it in another direction, which is typically how a real camera would work, because so this is the default camera. It's also the default camera to have a 50 millimeter lens, so if I change this to 50 millimeter, that would be how that would look. It would look different. Then there's something called depth of field, and if you know about cameras, you can limit the focal range inside a scene to a certain Z distance. You can have certain things in focus and certain things out of focus. And that really emulates how cameras work and gives it the kind of realistic look. So for example, if I enable depth of field for this thing right here, turn that on, and I take the f-stop and make the f-stop small, make the aperture large. Smaller f-stop, larger aperture means that you're opening up the aperture essentially. And the more open the aperture is, the narrower the depth of field. There you go. So now the boy is in focus because that's the focal location right here says the focus distance, which is right on the boy, essentially. And then these guys are out of focus because they are outside that depth of field, this little range of things that are in focus. So the depth of field is a great way to add realism to your camera. You can maneuver the camera through the scene. These guys will then be in focus and drop out of focus as the next guy comes in focus as you maneuver the camera through the scene. So I'll leave that on for now. You can also change from millimeters to something else. I like to work in pixels because that's really how I can calculate things. I know these guys are separated by some number of pixels, so that helps me decide, you know, things about focus distance and things like that. So I switch over to pixels when I work with cameras usually. So let's just turn away from that for a second. Let me show you how a camera looks when you're looking at it from some other view besides the active camera. Now up to now we've worked with just one view here inside the comp panel, but you can have multiple views. So I'm going to switch over to two views with this drop-down menu there. 
but a two views horizontal, meaning one side by side like that. The one on the left is set to top, the one on the right is set to active camera. If I click on the one on the left here, that makes it active. See the little orange things in the corner there? Now this is set to top, I can change it to something else from top to, let's say, from the left. And if I look at the camera, there's the camera looking into the scene, which gives you a more realistic look than manipulating the null object layer, which would be located right there. You can see the null object layer right there, the little red thing there. And looking at it from the side like this gives you also a good feel for how the camera is positioned and where it's focused and things like that. Let me open up the camera a little bit here and show you these various options. You've got transform options in terms of how you move the camera around and point it. And the camera options talk about things like the field and focus distance. So I can turn depth of field on or off here and not have to worry about going back over to the camera dialog box. I'll switch it back on like that. I can adjust the focus distance here. The focus distance is right there in the front. You can just watch that little bar there. If I start changing it, you'll see the bar move. So the bar is now way out there. I'm putting these guys in focus now. Bring it the other way. Make the focus distance less. There's a focus distance right there. Eventually, everybody would be out of focus. There you go. So it depends on where you put the focus distance. It's focusing on something that close to the camera. If I put it back here, though, I can focus out here. Let's just see where one of those other boys is. I'll click on the boy with the dog way in the back there. I'll pull this to the right so I can see where he is. He's way out there about 8,000 back. So if I were to take the focus distance to go way back there, and control minus a couple times, clicking back on the camera again, here, I click on the camera. I want to change the focus distance to something like 9,000. Then that boy will be in focus out there, and this boy's a little bit out of focus. In fact, you can see the focal point there just about reaching the boy. Maybe I need to go farther than 9,000. How about 11,000? See what that does. Puts him in focus, and this point in front is even more out of focus now. So you can see the focal point's way out here. This point here, it shows you the width of the camera, what it sees, basically, and this is the focus point. I mentioned this is a two-node camera. Let's zoom in a bit on that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll do Control or Command Plus to zoom in on this point of view. So I'll bring the focus point here back to, let's say, around about 2,500 or so, and that should be pretty close to the first boy, I think. Yeah, there's the focus point there, and pretty much got that on him. All right. So let me show you what the point of interest is. There's the point of interest option when you got a two-node camera. Point of interest is this point right there. You can maneuver that around by saying, which direction do I want the camera to point? You know, you can move the camera physically through space, but now that it's sitting in some place in space, you can also decide which direction you want to point it at by maneuvering it up and down like this, which I'm doing here from this left view. If I change to, let's say, a top view, and here I'd be maneuvering it left and right as to what it's pointing at. Again, it's more realistic to be able to change the camera view like this from where the camera's off in the distance rather than using the null object layer to manipulate this. Let's change a couple other things. Let's change the zoom factor. If I scroll in down here, I'll close transform and go down to camera options. You see this is zoom. If I start changing the zoom, let's say I increase the zoom, it'll work like any zoom lens. It'll zoom in on something. So I'll go a little bit farther in like that. And it behaves like a zoom lens. And you can see that our focal point's changing there. The focus is here. But this is autofocus, and this is the new guy who should be in focus. So we can change the focus even while we zoom, like a keyframe focusing. So I'll change the focus distance to go forward a little bit and get him in focus as we go by the first boy there. Need to get up quite a bit there. Now he's in focus, and the boy in front is out of focus. See how that works? One of the great advantages of working with the camera is that you can adjust the focus and keyframe that as you maneuver through something. Let's pull the zoom back out again. I'll just make it much smaller zoom here. I'm using the shift key as I hold this guy down. So you can pull way off into the distance now and have a very wide angle lens like that, or pull back in again. All right, so now that we've tried some of these things out, let's add a camera to a comp. So go to this add camera comp over there. This is the same comp here without the null object layer added. So you can actually get rid of the parent here just to kind of have more space. There you go. Now I want to add a camera to this. So to do that, I need to go to layer new camera, or I can try to find some empty space over here and right click in an empty space. If I right click on one of these guys, I open up the context menu for that layer. But if I go over here on the left hand side and right click, then I can open up new camera like that. There you go. And here's the camera. The default camera is 50 millimeters. So you go to there. And if you want to reset the default settings, sometimes they get kind of messed up. You can hold down the alt or the option key and then click on the garbage can that resets the default settings. Now I've got the 50 millimeter camera here selected, and it's two node or one node. Let's just click one node now, just to be a little different. And we'll have the depth of field turned off, I think, just for now. 
and change from, let's say, pixels to millimeters or back and forth. I'd left it at pixels because that's where I worked last. So you might need to change two pixels and do that. That's fine. And then we'll click OK. And that adds a camera. And since it's 50 millimeters, it basically looks exactly the same as this setting was. Now that we've got the camera here, you can always go back to the dialog box by double clicking on it. And there you go. You can always make some changes here if you want to. We'll cancel out of that. And you can also make a lot of changes down here inside the camera layer. Transform, you know, is changing the position, that kind of stuff. But let's go down here to the camera options. We can turn depth of field on now. Turn it off, turn it on here. Right now, not much happens because the aperture is relatively small. If you make the aperture really, really large, then you're going to start noticing the depth of field kicking in here as one thing may be in focus and the rest of the guys are out of focus. So you can change the aperture setting here on the fly as well. There are a few other options down here in terms of the blur level, which is set to 100%. It doesn't have to be 100%. You can make it just a little bit out of focus or a lot out of focus like that. So you can make these changes here. And then there's something called the iris shape. The fast rectangle means it actually does act quickly. If you look really closely, you might see the edges of the blur. are just a little bit kind of rectangular shaped or hard shaped, but not many people would notice this. So fast rectangle is fine, but you can also adjust your iris, which is really amazing that they go down to that level of detail. All right, the other things involve iris here, which we're not going to worry about for this course, and also the highlight, those other kinds of things. So that's just the basic process to add this. If I want to go to a two-node camera, let me show you what happens. So open up Transform here. We've got position, orientation, what have you. If I double-click on this to open up the dialog box, watch down here when I change from one node to two node. That adds a point of interest like that. And the point of interest says, where am I looking? Click OK. We've now added that. And as I said before, I think it's a good idea when you work with cameras to have two screens here. So I'll switch over from one view to two views. I usually like to work from top or the side. That way I can see the camera. I also can see the point of interest here right there. So you can maneuver the camera back here, but you control the point of interest up here if you work with a two-node camera. All right, now if you look at all these guys, you've got point of interest, you've got position, and even orientation. And you're thinking, this is a lot of stuff to manipulate, and it is. It's especially difficult because position has three different characteristics built into one property, which means that one keyframe controls all sorts of stuff, and it can get a little cumbersome when you're trying to manipulate the camera through a scene using position setup like this. So in the next two lessons, I'm going to show you two different ways to manipulate the camera, and I'm going to show you a special little trick that will help simplify that process. And then in the lesson following those two lessons, I'm going to show you two ways to use null object layers to help manipulate the camera in two special circumstances.